Hi there, I'm Michael, and today I'm going to fix this computer. So it's a client's computer. Uh, they brought it to me, uh, letting me know that the CPU was overheating and it was turning off after a couple of minutes of being on. And I was like, how did you know the CPU was overheating? Because most people don't know that. Uh, and he told me, oh yeah, I have this little utility uh, that runs in Windows and it shows me the temperature of the, of the CPU and other temperatures in the computer. I'm like, cool. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it's, it's going up to the max temperature and just turning the computer off. And I'm pretty sure the reason is because the all-in-one liquid cooler that's in here, it's from NZXT, it's a 120 millimeter um, water cooler. Let me turn this on. So it's hitting the power button. So those are pretty typical computer starting up sounds. What's missing on this computer is the rush of the liquid going through the hoses there. And that's because the pump isn't working. The pump is integrated into the all-in-one liquid cooler and you can't replace it. So when that happens, you have to just put in another CPU cooler. Turn the computer back off. I'm just gonna hit the power button one time. It's in Windows right now, but uh, it'll, it'll do a shutdown like that. I'm going to be installing this Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 CPU cooler. All right, so I've switched the camera to a head mount, so we're in first person mode now. Um, let's see, move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and take out the, uh, the cooler that's in here right now. Get this thing up on my desk. All right, so it's a NZXT case. Looks like it's got one thumb screw on the back, which you're supposed to be able to take off with your just thumb force, but somebody really tightened that down. Okay, loose. Are you loose? Okay. So then I should be able to pull this way and get the... Oh, come on. Are you not loose? It's close. Oh, screw came out. These are supposed to be captive. It would not. There it goes. Okay, get that screw back in there so it didn't just fall out. Good. Okay. Uh, so yeah, need to take the screws out uh, from the back, and then this cooler will uh, we'll pop off. Let's go ahead and disconnect that. Yeah, so that cable most likely runs to a uh, USB port down here so that the, uh, the cooler can be monitored. Why am I using a manual screwdriver for this? Okay, Got some screws here. And then we'll unscrew these guys. I'm gonna reuse the fan that's here. This 120, mil 120 millimeter fan, gonna put it right back where this uh, all-in-one cooler's radiator was on the back. All right. Screw down. All right, so it should just come out. Nope, still got a, got one more this is this should be the pump. This is the part that failed, and it's got a power cable that's running to the back. We need to get to it. More thumb screws that are on too tight. Look at that. Oh, there we go. And these are captive as well. Captive just means they won't come out all the way, or they're not supposed to. They're meant to just kind of sit there and flop, so you don't lose them. Another screw down. 
<sighs> All right, you you gonna come off now? There it goes, loose. <laughs> it's such a. There we go. Okay. All right. Um. So that is the cable that I disconnected first, and it likely just comes down through here and goes up under. Yeah, it's, I'm wiggling the cable. Pretty sure it's this guy right here. You come out. Yeah, there you go. small one. I think I see it. It's running through a channel here. Very nice cable management. Wow, they really, really got that in there. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure this is a, this is a standard like three or four pin cable that's connected to the motherboard that was powering the pump. Yeah. Okay, so that's through. Now, pull that. And what else? Ah, the fan here is coming through. Yeah, it's this guy. like these channels for cables it's nice yeah and there's the other one so it was CPU fan and CPU optional they had it plugged into which is correct all right let's get this bad boy out of here there we go through yeah we're gonna reuse this uh, this fan here. Gonna put it right back where it was, but this gotta come off too. Whenever you uh, do this, just keep in mind that there's thermal compound that uh, anything it rubs against, it uh, does not like to come off of. So, I'll clean this up a little bit. Also get it off the CPU while I'm at it. So this is an AMD CPU. It's an AMD Ryzen um, 5 5600X. Yeah, it's a six core CPU. Nice. And we also need to take off this back plate. Okay, and these little risers. But they just pull right off. Not risers, more spacers. And again, we're still just I'm just still just taking off the uh, the original before we go back. Get all this out of the way. cooler off, or not cooler, the, the fan off the cooler, so that we can reuse it. And these screws we won't be using. All right. I'm a little concerned that we don't have the original AMD AM4 backplate. We don't have the original, and I think that the CPU cooler requires the original. 
All right, let's put this back on. Looking for directions. Yeah, here we go. The direction of airflow. So there's a little air, uh, arrow that uh, you find on most fans that tells you the direction that the air flows. We want it to go that way. So it takes the air out the back of the case. And I'm going to put this kind of through there at the top so it comes through. And we'll bring it back to plug it in. But we need some screws to hold that in. Yeah, these are the types of screws that you need for putting in a, a fan. What they do is they kind of grip into the plastic of the fan, kind of bite into it, and that's how the how it's held in place. That dropped. I'll pick it up in a minute. Kind of get it started and then power it in. <laughs> I just didn't hit the, hit the light on that. Okay, so then this would come back through the top and we will plug it in let's see system fan 2 we have a little place we can plug in right there okay so then you go back where I put you before <laughs> I'm just pushing it towards the back and pulling it through so that I can lay it right down here in that little spot. Okay, let's, I think we're ready to look at the CPU cooler. Let's set this down for a minute. I may have a back plate. I'm just, I'm not, I do, I have one. I'm, I'm almost positive. I, I think I saw it a couple of days ago. Yeah, so this is a Be Quiet Pure Rock 2 CPU cooler. Um, I installed this a couple of years ago on a, um, I was showed, you know, I actually filmed a video of me installing it onto a uh, Intel socket 1366. Uh, this is going to be for an AM4 or AM5 for that matter installation because the process is the same. Um, I may, I'll try and show the, uh, the hardware for the Intel side of things in this video, if I can, if I remember. If I don't, I'm sorry. Okay, so fairly fairly simple. Not a whole lot in the box. We have a manual, which is gonna fold out. Okay, so we have the parts that are included. This is for socket, Intel socket 11, sorry, 2011. The directions for that. Okay, here's more standard Intel stuff. So socket 1200, 1150, you know, the, the 11.5X basically, and socket 1700. So it, it supports all the latest uh, Intel um, CPU mounting. Yeah, and the directions um, are fairly similar to the AMD one I'm going to be following. It's the AM5, AM4, says so right there. It's the same for both. Uh, yeah, good directions, I think. Well, let's look at the hardware. Right. So these are for holding on fans. It comes with one, you can put a second one on the other side of it. So by default, it's gonna be fan like that. You can also buy a second fan and put it on that side so it you know both, both pushes and pulls through air. Be quiet. Okay, yeah, good. Be quiet puts the mounting hardware in separate bags for the most part. So that's for AMD. That's what we're gonna need. That's what we're gonna need. Here's the Intel bag, and then the rest of this will be common parts. Very good. So a couple of screws and this bar. Let's let's go ahead and look at the Intel stuff. Even though I'm not gonna be using it during this build. 
can show you all how it goes together. Okay, so we have two sets of bars. These two have two spots where you could put a screw through or two areas. So it's, yeah, it's two separate bars. The one that only has a, a single hole is for socket 1700. And for the other, um, the 1200 and the 11 five X's, you can put them either uh, in one spot or the other. Then that may be something you have to figure out while you're actually doing it. But on the back plate, the part that goes on the back of the motherboard, there are two different as well. So 1700 would be the outside and uh, the 1200. Oh, okay, so the 12. Okay, now I'm confused. Why are, Why is there two spots to put these through if it doesn't tell you? Unless it's somewhere down, down here in the text. Which it could be. Wow, this is really not a very good instruction video, Michael. We'll get there. Let's see. So the back plate, let's see. Uh, so we need the stuff in here, although probably not all of it. Let's get this out of the bag. Okay, so we've got probably four of these guys. Yep. Four of these guys. And there's another four of those. And four of those and four of those. Right. So it looks like for Let's see what the other ones are for. Okay, there you go. If you if you happen to have a socket um, 2011 or uh, 2066, you would use these right here. So these screws go actually into the socket, whereas for the rest of the Intel installation, it's going to be these guys being used. So these are very, not very useful. Just put them back in a bag. Uh, do I need those? Yes. Okay, so we need all that. So if we had an Intel CPU we were trying to put this on, what we would do is for socket 1700, we would put it through the outside like that and then hold it in place with these little rubber kind of washers. So it would go like that. I'm gonna put one on the other side too. So if we had a, if we had a 1700, we would put it on the outside Kind of have to rotate it, and there you go. Kind of fits in there. So I put on the other two, and then you kind of have to roll it to get it all the way on like that. So I could put on the other two, but really this would come back through. Um, this would come through the back of a motherboard. These would go right on top. So the motherboard would be here. That would screw in. And then from then on, I think we follow the same directions I'm going to do for the AMD. Yeah, so very nice. one of the rubber washers went to the floor. I felt it hit my foot, so I'm pretty sure I know where it is. Yep, there it is. All right, let's get the rest of this put away. Don't need a lot of this. But, if the uh, if the customer ever wants to switch to an AMD 
CPU, they would have this hardware to make it happen. All that plus those are also Intel. Box. See, we only need two of these because we're not putting a separate fan on. Those in the box. It's common hardware. And then we have our AMD specific. All right, let me get that back plate. So, so this back plate or one very similar to it will come with the motherboard. You don't have to buy this separate. It just comes with it. It was taken off by the manufacturer of the computer or whoever built this to put on that uh, on that other cooler. Computer, you come up here. Ah. So what I'm going to be doing next is I'm going to be putting this through the back. And there's nothing to hold it together. You know, to hold it on, so it's going to just kind of sit there like that. Let's go ahead and get our, our hardware ready before I start doing that. Done. I should have done that. AMD. All right, there's the bars. And there's the screws and the spacers. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is putting these on top and then the screws through. So, back plate. Through the back, and I'm going to put a spacer I'm going to have to lay this down a little bit more and let gravity help me. Oof, this thing's heavy. Right, and there's a direction out of these too. Um, one side's a little bit more open. If you do it the other way, it just will not go on. I don't know if y'all can see that, but that's more open, that's more narrow. And then you want the open side down. This is gonna get difficult. What I might do here is go ahead and run the the screws through, just kind of drop edge of the table drop. It would help to have an extra hand. Sometimes you just don't got that. All right, let's so if I can drop these in to the spot like that. And then get these started in the hole. Just giving it a quick pulse down and then tighten one. And then the other. Okay, let's do that again. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. But it worked the first time. Let's do it again. Alright, drop it them. Of course I can't see with that grip. There we go. And better. A little better. Lay them in there. Another way to do this, which would made it a lot easier, I could have used a piece of tape, a tape to hold the back plate in place, so I wouldn't have to hold it like this. All right, that's down. That's down. Okay, so now I can lay this thing. Uh, 
just like that. Now, thermal compound is already pre 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 Now, the thermal compound is already pre I did it again. Take three. Now, the thermal compound is already pre-applied to the cooler, and there's a cover on it, which... Dang, that cover's really on there. Usually they come off a lot easier. But yeah, there's the, uh, there's the thermal compound. You don't have to add extra. And I don't know if y'all can see. Yeah, you see the striations in my thumb? That was from just gripping it kind of a little bit too hard. You want to be careful with these uh, heat sinks with the very thin fins. Very easy to, uh, to hurt yourself. All right, we need the crossbar. Aha, another bag to open. Oh, it's already open. So this crossbar, what it's meant to do is to fit right through here. And it's kind of grooved so that it locks in place like that. If you look at the uh, at the cooler, it's kind of off to, to one side. It's meant to be going this way in order to uh, add a little bit more RAM clearance over here. Okay. So I will set this. What I'm going for is for the holes right here to match up with the screw holes on the bar down below. I'm going to put it approximately in the right spot and let it touch down. I'll switch to a regular screwdriver if I can find one. That'll work. Put this through that hole and just give it a little bit of a turn just to get it started. I'm not tightening it down. I'm just getting it started in the hole. Do the same thing back here. And when you do this, if you can't get them to start, you may have gone too, uh, too far with the first one. Back it off as much as you can. Um, and then what I generally do is just the same number of turns on each side to get the, the cooler to go down evenly. You can kind of look at it. Right now it's 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 almost level. I don't know if, if that, that's going to show up, but if you compare it to um, this piece of metal here, it's kind of this way. It's to the to the left a little bit, but watch it as I turn. See how it evened out? It'll also, you, it'll, you'll be able to rotate it a little bit if you if you want it exactly like vertical with the case you can you can mess with it and get it there but yeah just go same number of turns until it stops for this cooler you want to tighten it all the way down getting close all right that's down all the way tight and that's down Okay, so the fan, we're going to look for one of those directional arrows. Yeah, there we go. So directional arrow, fan goes, the airflow goes that way. And that's what we want. We want to bring cool air here, hot air out that way. So to kind of do that, and I'll plug it in, but we need to put these guys on. And these are meant to clip it to the cooler. So most of the time you go through the outside holes like that. And then when you put it down here, you can let it fall out so you have to do it again. <laughs> It's okay to make mistakes. Just do it again. Learn from them and move on. Just don't break stuff. Okay, so it kind of clips to this part 
and you do the same thing on this side. If you don't have enough room because of your graphics card, you can take it out, but generally you can make it work just like that. All right, we're going into CPU fan. It's listed right there, CPU fan, CPU opt. I don't know if y'all can see that, but it's the, the one closest to the top we're going into. And we'll take the excess cable length and put it right down under the cooler. Looks clean. All right, now we test it. So before this computer would just overheat and turn itself off after several minutes because the liquid was not flowing through the CPU cooler. The fan had failed. All right, so we got power in, main power on. Probably gonna need a mouse and keyboard. One of these is mouse and one's keyboard. Like that, video in. And set my monitor to HDMI and power this bad boy on. Okay, so we got the back fan we put uh, in place spinning and the CPU fan spinning and video should be booting into Windows. Yeah, there it goes. All right, so it's come up and asked me if I'd like to make this a public or private network. I'm gonna say no to make it public. And that'll make it so that um, his computer can't access uh, my network like fully and it won't see the printers, it won't automatically install and that kind of stuff. Downloading, okay, we're get some, getting some Discord stuff <laughs> updated. Okay, here's the here's probably the software he used to show that the CPU was uh, was overheating or showing him that the CPU was overheating. It's got the CPU load and there's the temperature. Okay, so currently it's at 56, 54, yeah, 53. It's it's lowering uh, because the fan speed uh, spun up. So apparently when it uh, started doing uh, things in Windows, it uh, put a load on it. And here comes Discord again. But it's, it's already doing much better than it was. Uh, before, I'm sure it was going to 90 eventually and then just turning the computer off. Looks like it's gonna be, yeah, there's the 40s, 70s as it calms down, good stuff. Um, so I think most likely this is, you know, perfectly good cooling, but let's, let's put it under a load just to be sure. Let's give it something to do. All right, guest account, let's go get the Intel CPU burning tool. All right, it's not made by Intel, it's made by Tech Power Up. Um, a viewer on, the, on one of the live streams mentioned this and uh, I've, um, I'm liking it. Okay, so it's a zip file and they already have WinZip. We'll use it to do the extraction. So downloads folder, Intel folder. Okay, and now we need to go to the downloads folder. Downloads. All right, so Intel burn test, and we will double click it and allow it to make changes. And let's do a very high stress test. The, um, the maximum, it just takes a lot longer to get through it, and it doesn't add that much you know, heat you know, to, the, to the system. All right, so with that running, we can go look at the CPU, switch to 100% load, which is what we wanted. And here goes the temperature. It's at 62. And the fan speed ramped up in order to, to help keep it cool. Looks like it's hovering around 63 or 64. There's 65, and I heard the fan speed ramp up a little bit more. You can actually see the fan speed here. It's really nice. Okay, there's 66. Went right back down to 64, though. It looks like it's going to be mid-60s. It might go up, a, up to close to 70, but it's, it's not going to overheat. Um, most CPUs, including this one, 
um, don't really overheat and power themselves off to protect themselves until you get up until the mid 90s, if not the hundreds, like 95 to 105, depending on the CPU. We can actually go check that um, since we have a since we have a uh, a browser. Is it a 5600? System specs. 5600X, yeah, okay. So it is a Ryzen 5600X max CPU temp. 95. So if it gets to 95, uh, that would be the maximum, and that would be the point where it would either slow itself down in order to keep it from turning off, or if the CPU cooler was really not working like it was previously with that liquid cooler, it would just turn the computer off, and that's what was happening. So 95 degrees on that uh, on this CPU is the maximum. Yeah, it was just on 65 and went back to 64. I think that's likely to be about as high as it's going to go. It might go up a little bit more, but... And this is this um, this burning test from uh, from Tech Power Up, uh, made by Agent God. Um, thank you, Agent God. Uh, really puts a good stress on it. Yeah, see, it went up to like sixty eight for a second there, then right back down. Yeah, we're good. All right, so that's how you install a Be Quiet Pure Rock Two onto an AMD AM4 or AM5 motherboard and CPU. Thanks for watching.